Hello learners, my name is Meg Phelps and I'm a foundational instructor here at Nightingale College and I'm here to talk to you today about managing your learning space effectively. So today we're going to talk about defining space management, identifying your current learning space, creating your ideal learning space, tips and tricks, and then we'll do a quick recap. So what is space management? So space management involves strategically managing physical spaces to make sure that the space is efficient and effective. Effective space management means making sure that the space in which you do your work is conducive to generative learning. And that's going to be really important to remember as you work through your courses here at Nightingale. Why is it important? Because it allows us to stay organized. It allows us to stay on track during learning. So we know what's coming next. We know where all of our things are. It increases that chance of consistent studying. So you're more likely to study in the same spot in the same way each time rather than doing it sporadically in different locations each time. And it increases the chances of repeated success in online environments. Studying is going to be very important and the space in which you study is crucial for you to define clearly before you actually start studying there. So right now, let's look at your current space. Take a moment, look around you. What is your current space? Where do you study? What does that look like? Is it cluttered? Is it disorganized? Can you see piles everywhere? Or is it clean, tidy, somewhere in between? Do you even have a consistent space for doing your work? Is this something you've even considered before? If not, I strongly suggest you do. It's gonna make studying, it's gonna make nursing college much easier for you. So creating your ideal space. Once you've identified your space and see this is where I study most of the time, this is how I do it, think about what an ideal space for studying for you would look like. What type of space would you need to be successful? What does that look like? I suggest finding images and even creating a collage of what you want your ideal space to look like. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy 16 magazines and cut out pictures and paste them all together, but you could do some cut and pasting on the internet, put it into a Word document, you have options. Or if you wanna do an old fashioned collage or a collage by hand, you can do that too. But either way, create some kind of visual representation of what that should look like for you. How big should it be? How much space do you need? Do you need the size of an entire office? Do you study in your car? Do you have a smaller space than that? Think about this. Think about what is going to work for you the most effectively for your specific situation because they're all different, right? So I'm gonna give you a few tips and tricks about how to create an ideal learning space for yourself. So let's talk about location and environment. So you definitely wanna have a quiet area. So choose that space with minimal noise and interruptions, libraries, dedicated home offices, a quiet corner of your room can work well. Um, when I was doing my undergrad, I ended up doing a lot of work in my car. Um, waiting between classes and doing studying and trying to find space everywhere. And because it was a consistent inconsistencies, it worked for me. That worked for my specific situation. That was what was quiet. I had small children at home, so it was not usually quiet there. So this worked for me. So think about trying to identify spaces that could be quiet spaces for you to work. And good lighting. Make sure to use natural light if possible or opt for a bright adjustable desk lamps to reduce eye strain. You don't wanna be doing your studying in the dark because that's just gonna maybe even make you more tired. Now you're more likely to not retain the information that you're trying to learn. Ventilation, right? Ensure there's pop proper airflow to maintain comfort to avoid feeling drowsy, right? So maybe have a window open, fan on if possible. Again, if I was bit into the car thing, so I ended up rolling the windows down a bit and making sure that it was, you know, nice and fluid, not too hot, not too cold for me. So if you're doing in a designated office or something like that, think about furniture and layout, okay? So desk and a chair is usually, that's the solid go-to, right? Try and use an ergonomic chair that supports your back. You don't want to start having back issues. You want to choose a sturdy desk with enough surface area for your laptop, textbooks, and notes. So you just want to make sure that you have a space. Let's say you don't have access to a desk or chair. Maybe you can use a, a pillow and a small table, right? 
but make sure that you're comfortable, that you're keeping that and taking that into consideration as you are choosing these items with which to work, okay? And the correct height, right? So if you're using the desk and chair, you want your elbows to be able to rest comfortably at a 90 degree angle with your screen at eye level to prevent neck strain. And again, this is all the ideal space. If that's not feasible or tangible for you, what you want to do is just make sure that you're not looking up at the computer or looking way down at the computer. You want things to be level, okay? And you want to make sure, too, even with this, and I don't have this anywhere in, else in here, and I'm just going to pop it in, is that make sure, too, when you're studying and you're doing that, you're looking up every every couple, of, like I think, what is it, two minutes for 20 seconds and looking 20 feet away so that your eyes don't start to strain with the constant staring at the screen. So just a couple of tips that hopefully will help you with the furniture and the, the actually that space. So let's talk about a couple of tools. So you can use storage, right? If you have access to it, use shelves, file organizers, drawers, store your textbooks, notes, other materials, anything you think you might need. Think about what tools you need to make you the most effective learner that you can be. How can you be the best nursing student? Those are the kinds of materials that you want, right? You're going to need things like pens. You're probably going to need things like highlighters and sticky notes. I know this is an online course or this is an online college. However, there is something to be said about actually using pen and paper and what it does for your actual brain and memory. So there's nothing to say you can't do that. My laptop has sticky notes on it. I have things that are very important to me that I need to remember, whether it's make sure you do this every day or contact this person or send this file here. I have these listed on my laptop so that when I'm wondering what I need to do, boom, it's right there. I've not forgotten. So you also want to consider cable management. If you have a laptop or you have a desktop where there's cables everywhere, Consider tidying those up using clips or organizers. Zip ties work really well or the twist ties on bread bags work really well to keep those cords together so that things don't accidentally become unplugged when you're in the middle of a test because we definitely don't want that to happen, right? And consider a bulletin board or whiteboard. You can use those to track deadlines, create study schedules, or jot down quick reminders. I'm a big fan of whiteboards. Um, I have several in, the, in my home. I have one for work that is smaller that says this is your weekly schedule i have one on, on the on the um, fridge that has to buy and to do and then i have a very very large one that i can then brainstorm on it's 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 massive it's like i don't know like maybe five feet tall and three feet wide that i can brainstorm and write things on now you don't have to go overboard like that but you can even get one of those things at a, at a dollar 25 store or something just so that you have a way to quickly engage with something that you might need to write down and you might need to save or remind yourself of later in the day. So staying focused, right? So now that we're, we've talked about our ideal space, we've talked about location, furniture, tools you might need, how are you going to stay focused as you do this? Designate zones. We talked about this a little bit before, but it's going to be really important that you're creating a specific area for studying, relaxing, and storing materials to minimize distractions. Okay, you don't want to do all of these things in the same spot. The place where you sit and hang out or the place where you sit and relax is definitely not the place where you want to be studying, right? If you lay in your bed to relax and then eventually fall asleep, well, if you start studying there, then that's what you're going to do. So we want to be awake. We want to be making sure we're paying close attention and that we have our special study space. Organize those supplies that you just pulled out, right? Make sure that they are neatly, neatly organized and they are put within reach. Everything is arranged so you know where things belong. And I tell my kids this, but we're still learning, right? We want to make sure we put our things back where we had, right? I tend to not do that sometimes. And then I find I'm looking for that pen or I'm looking for that chart or something. So that's an important one to remember is to organize those supplies. So saying focus, maximize that space too. If you've got wall shelves, storage bins, desk organizers, you can utilize vertical and hidden spaces effectively. Um, you can, and again, you don't have to blow your budget either when you do this kind of stuff, if you choose to do these, right? You can consider going to places like 
uh, a, a resale shop or going to places like the dollar 25 store or something like that and just finding these small things that are just gonna and it's just for now it's just for while you're in in, in college right it's not something you'll probably stick with forever but so it doesn't need to be super expensive or fancy. It just needs to be organized and effective for you. And again, we want to minimize those distractions. So remove any unnecessary items from your study area to maintain focus. You've got posters on the walls. We've got flashing lights. We've got this and that. We don't want too many distractions because you're going to start studying. That's going to start looking interesting over there. We're going to start doing that thing where we dart our eyes back and forth. And then all of a sudden we're distracted. We've lost flow and we're unable to stick with what we were doing. So it's going to be that's something to keep in mind. What in your space? is going to distract you, do a once over in the room in the space that you study. First thing you see that distracts you, make sure that's not there when you're studying. So a few reminders for you today. If your workspace doesn't look like any of the workspaces that I described, that's okay because we all have different workspaces, okay? What's gonna be most important is that you find the one that works best for you. The workspace is going to change from time to time. Okay. Give yourself that grace. Let's say you are working and you've been working for a really long time and you didn't have, you worked a double shift and you didn't have time to go to your space, your study space. We have to adapt, right? You've got to be flexible. That is so important is remaining flexible as a student, as a learner, right? Because that's what allows you to grow is not hitting that wall and then giving up or saying, this is way outside of my comfort zone, I can't do it. It's saying, okay, it's gonna be hard, and it's gonna be hard, but you can do it, as long as you learn to adapt to the new situations that come your way, okay? So think about that in terms of studying, something small like that, because those habits that you create there are habits that you can share and that will, will transfer to other parts of your life. So, I really recommend at least trying some of this stuff, right? What have you got to lose? It's not going to hurt you if you organize your desk. It's not going to hurt you if you dedicate this specific time or this specific space each week to do this kind of studying. So at least give it a try, right? So how do I carve a space, right? Think about this. Maybe you, you don't have a consistent space for working. Maybe you have to cram, as I said, studying in between shifts at a hospital. But again, whatever your situation is, you've got to find a consistent space for studying and learning. It's got to be something you can count on. Even if it's on Tuesdays, I study at my grandma's house. At Thursdays, I study at the library. And on Sundays, I study in my car. Well, now we've got, we have consistent spaces. And hopefully they're organized in similar ways where we don't have extra distractions around or loud music playing or any of that stuff because we're going to get distracted and then we're going to start to struggle. So consider that space. Now. Briefly, I'm going to jump into something a little bit different. We're still talking about managing space, managing our time, right? Um, I like to throw this in because I think this is an important parable. Um, and it's one that I think emphasizes well this concept of organization, right? Whether it's space, whether it's time, whatever it is. So there's this story called The Rocks and Sand, and it teaches us about prioritizing the most important things in life. So I've got a simplified version where this professor asks his students to imagine they have a jar. He fills it first with big rocks, asks if it's full. They say yes. He adds smaller pebbles to the jar that fill the spaces between the rocks. He asks again if the jar is full. The students agree. But now he pours sand in the jar, which fills in the tiny spaces between the pebbles and the rocks. And he asks again, is the jar full? The students say yes. He then explains, those big rocks, when we think about how we organize our time, our life, those big things are the unchanging things, the things that are most important in our lives, right? Family, health, relationships. If you're thinking about organizing your time in as far as your personal time, that's how you would do that. But if you want to put this in a, in a learning context, that could be things like your classes, your work schedule, things that don't change, sleeping, eating, like things that you know you have to do when you organize your time, 
look at that schedule, put those things down first because they're not going to change. So that if you decide to do a time management schedule for yourself in your newly organized space that is conducive to learning, I highly recommend doing that because that's going to be very important, right? The first step, put in those rocks. The pebbles are the smaller things in life, in your personal life. It'd be like your job or your hobbies. Whereas we're, when we think about this in an academic context, that could be things like your study time, could be things like self-care, things that are important but are flexible, more flexible and changing. The sand represents all the little less important things. In both cases, things like social media, distractions, that's not self-care. Doom scrolling is not self-care. Um, watching your favorite show for the sixth time in a row, that actually is self-care, right? Because now we're trying to comfort ourselves. There's a completely different parts of our brains are activated when we do these different things. So we don't want to focus too much on those things. They aren't as important, especially when we're trying to organize our time for studying. The key lesson in all of that is that if you fill your life with the small stuff first, like, oh, okay, I've got to go out here. I have to go do this. We have to make sure that we are meeting with the Johnsons for cards on Thursday or whatever, you know, your, whatever your life looks like. If you fill it with your time with the most unimportant things first, you're not going to have room for this. You're not going to have room for the big rocks. And I actually, I had a, an instructor that did this, did the actual scenario in front of me and it was really interesting to watch her pour the sand in first and then the pebbles and then the rocks. And there was no way it was going to fit. It was, there was no way. Everything was overflowing. There was like four rocks couldn't even go in the jar. So it's, it's really important to consider how you're organizing that time. Focus on those big things first and then the smaller things can fall into place. And you've got to prioritize what matters most. In our case, as you start here at Nightingale or as you continue your work here at Nightingale, consider that space first. Once you have that comfortable space, then we start worrying about how we're going to manage that time. Okay, so to recap, how you organize your space matters and it matters a lot. It's going to, it can be the difference between effective and ineffective studying. So take the time to create a productive workspace for yourself prior to starting that studying. If you don't have it already, that's fine. Now's the time to make that change. Now's the time to at least attempt it and see what something different could do for you. Try to study in the same space each time if possible. Again, these are recommendations, but it's also, I don't know your life any more than you know my life. So you want to try and find something that is most effective for you. But consistency is really important when it comes to studying. So if you are chewing gum while you are studying and, and then you take your test, well, if you chew the same gum, the chances of you remembering things, I believe, is a little bit higher because we have that memory that, that, that is attached to it. So keep that in mind, that consistency, doing it over and over again, that repetitive, and then it will start to stick. And when you organize your space and time, you're creating that conducive learning experience and environment for yourself. And you deserve that. As you go through your time here, it's going to be rough. It's going to be hard. You might get in three classes and realize that the space that you've created for yourself isn't going to work anymore. You might get in two semesters, two terms, three terms, and you move. Maybe you have something really fortunate happen to you and now you have a new home and now you have to reorganize everything, but just make sure, take that time to organize your space first and then focus on the time and the actual material that you have to study because that's going to allow you not to have to worry about your actual physical location, all right? So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you and you take care. Flame forward.